Welcome back to the old set. I don't know how to hold that microphone, so I'm gonna hold it like... You, you're gonna see different types of holding the microphone, so bear with me. Okay, so this week's roll started with the Usos and the New Day. Up. So the Usos came out and they started bragging about how they're gonna be number one champs and how they beat Brawling Brutes. After that, the New Day came out and it was actually a good ass segment because each of the teams expressed how hard it was f to make name for themselves. For the Usos, it was hard to make a name for themselves because their family was great. And for the New Day, it was hard because they are first generation superstars and it was hard. It was actually a pretty good segment, but at some point Matt Riddle interrupted and there was that random 3 versus 3 match like Usos and Solo versus New Day and Matt Riddle. Solo got the victory for the Bloodline when he pit Matt Riddle. Good match. After that, we have Baron Corbin and Cedric Alexander up. But I'm gonna ignore the fact that JBL hyped up the match. It honestly started as a squash match and it finished as a squash match. And I like that Cedric had some momentum going on for him at some point. But yeah, Baron Corbin got the W. I understand that decision, kind of. What are we doing with Cedric now? Seth Rollins Open Challenge Part 1. <laughs> Up. Seth Rollins came out into the ring and uh, he was like, uh, we're doing an open challenge now and who's gonna come out? And the Judgment Day came, came out and I was excited because we we're, were about to see Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins. But at the moment that Finn Balor said that he's answering that challenge, the OCM music hit and they said that they have a solution for the real problem and Miriam came back. It was awesome because the OC were victorious and it's a good setup for the war games. Otis and Elias up. In general, it was a good match, but I just don't understand where Elias is going and I don't understand why Otis is getting a victory. Not that it's bad Otis to get a victory, but the way Otis got the victory is strange. Why Chad needed to help. I understand that probably it's not good enough for Elias just to beat Otis because it's gonna discredit Alpha Academy, but at the same time Chad helping Otis is discrediting Alpha Academy as well. So after that we had Bianca, Oscar, and Alexa in the ring and they were trying to say that damage control sucks and all of that stuff. I'm not gonna go into the promo. We had that cringe segment of Asuka and Io Sky talking Japanese. I am a Bulgarian and at one point Rusev is, was in the roster in WWE and it was really cringe listening to him talking in Bulgarian. I assume it's the same level of cringe for Japanese people listening to Asuka and Io talking in Japanese. The segment was up uh, because basically we understand that Nikki Cross is allied with Damage Control and we are preparing a War Games match. Austin Theory versus Shelton Benjamin, up. It was a good match, but I was kind of sad that Benjamin got the loss and uh, we we're trying to build Theory on top of Benjamin. And uh, yeah, it, in general, it was a good match. The Miz versus Johnny Gargano. Up. The Miz said that last week's interview with Johnny Gargano, Johnny Gargano was saying false things. After that, Johnny Gargano came out and he said that he actually has some hidden camera footage of him talking with a director or actually a person who Johnny Gargano hired to be undercover to talk with Miss about that. And in that interview, basically, Miss is saying that everything that Johnny said last week was true. After that, they had a match. At some point during the match, Miss acted like someone pulled him off under the ring. And after he went out, he said to the referee, please look out to see who is under the ring. And while the referee was looking, he struck Johnny Gargano with the wrench. Um, basically, after that, he got the victory. When Miz was victorious and he was bragging, Dexter Loomis came and attacked him from behind with a chair. And he also escaped from the security because they started chasing him. And I really don't understand why security is chasing him. After that, we had a match that was strange for me because I thought that 24-7 championship vanished at some point. 
So we had Dana Brooke versus Nikki Cross for the 24-7 championship. Nikki Cross is the new champ and it's kind of weird because Nikki Cross after that threw the championship in the trash. We could just have skipped that match in general. I don't know why we're throwing cha championship in the trash. I understand the hatred towards the 24-7 championship, but just it wasn't necessary, you know. Last but not least, the main event, Seth Rollins Open Challenge Part 2, down. Call me Angelo the main event hater, but hear me out. You know, everything was great about that because I really like Seth as a champion. I don't know, he brings that sweet aura of, I don't know, likable champion, no matter how much of a heel he is, kind, kind of like the Roman aura. He also mentioned that uh, this month he's doing, uh, he's making 10 years in the WWE. Uh, and after that, he asked, who is going to answer my open challenge? And Ali was about to answer, but Bobby beat him up. Bobby sa said that he's going to answer the challenge. Bobby came out to the ring. He attacked Rollins before the match started. Bobby destroyed Rollins and he went out. The match never even started. After that, Austin Theory showed up, he cashed in his money in the bank contract, right before he was about to pin Seth, Bobby came back, Bobby beat up Theory, Theory barely survived, barely made it to the ring for the 10 count from the ref, and Seth stomped him, won the match, and Theory felt the cash in, it's a down, it's special enough that Theory was cashing in for a mid-card title, and was about to give a lot of prestige to that title if it was a successful cash-in. I like that Seth is keeping the championship. I like that Theory is not the new champ. I like the, the fact that the Theory failed. Where are we are going with this money in the bank contract situation? We wasted a couple of months building Theory as a money in the bank holder, youngest money in the bank holder, whatever it is. And at the end, he is like the United States champion is super valuable. I'm going to cash into that. I'm not going to bother with Roman. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of strange. And that's why it receives down. The long term storytelling was kind of a mess here and that's why i'm giving down sorry so in general this week's raw up thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate that you were here and i'm gonna see you in a few days for smackdown yes i'm holding my phone like that what is your problem it's like i'm having a call but i'm actually talking with you what, what is the issue here what what what, what is the issue here